Listen to part of a lecture in an environmental science class. In today's class, I would like to talk about ways to harness energy from the sea. More specifically, let's focus on tidal energy, or tidal power, which is a form of hydropower, that converts the energy from the rise and fall of the tides, into electricity. Tidal turbines are used to get energy from these tidal currents within the ocean. They operate very much like windmills, just under the water, where the three-bladed horizontal axis rotor, is driven by flowing currents. As the currents pass through the turbines, the turbines will spin and produce energy. Um, but Professor, don't currents move more slowly than wind? I mean, how could they generate energy? Well, water is about 800 times denser than air, so we can say tidal energy is more powerful than wind. And, tidal power is, relatively prosperous, at low speed, and can generate electricity, even at speeds as low as 1 meter per second, while most wind turbines can start at 3 meters per second to 7 meters per second. So, even with a slow current, there is enough force to generate a large amount of power. I guess tidal energy has a greater advantage over wind energy. That can be quite true, and there are some other advantages of tidal energy, we can consider as well. Unlike wind, which is very unpredictable, and solar energy, which does not work well on cloudy days, the tide is a consistent and predictable energy source, that can offset the intermittency of solar and wind energy. And of course, both tidal turbines and wind turbines use natural, and renewable energy, so they are regarded as green energy. Since they are emitting zero greenhouse gases, does that mean they don't have any negative effect on the environment? Not entirely. Many people suppose that renewable energy sources have no negative effects, but all energy sources have some impact on our environment. Of course, fossil fuels, coal, and natural gas substantially do more harm than renewable energy sources. However, it is better to say that the intensity of environmental impact depends on the specific type of technology used in the energy sources. For example, Building tidal turbines will require fossil fuels made into plastic, which will produce pollution. And, building structures that can withstand strong turbulence, requires high construction costs. Since seawater is extremely corrosive, particularly for metal parts, turbines have to be made with special alloys, which is by no means a cheap operation. Although tidal energy systems are age-resistant with long lifespans, having an average of 75 to 100 years of working use, Compared to solar panels which usually last for 25 to 30 years, not many are willing to make the initial investment, because of the costly undertakings, that require a lot of capital at the beginning. When we consider the cost and benefits in the long run, tidal energy is more economical, and the upfront costs will eventually pay off. However, companies and governments are more concerned with the short-term financial plans, to meet investment goals within one fiscal year, and therefore, they often overlook the bigger picture. Despite these pitfalls, tidal energy compares significantly favorably with fossil fuels, as it is renewable energy, in which tidal devices create no pollution during operation. That being said, there have been some environmental concerns, that have been raised in recent years. It is a no-brainer that these tidal systems, require underwater construction, which can result in habitat destruction. One of the greatest offenders is the tidal barrage, which is the most efficient way of utilizing tidal energy, but its dam-like structure impedes the movements of sea life, and potentially wreaks havoc, on marine ecosystems. Therefore, there are some newer tidal technologies, like the floating barge, that are being tested. This design utilizes a floating pumping system, which eliminates the need for seabed construction, overall making it less costly, and less environmentally damaging than, any other tidal system currently in use. Question 1. What is the main purpose of the lecture? Question 2. Why does the professor mention density of water? Question 3. According to the professor, why are tidal energy better than other energy sources? Question
Question 4. Listen again to part of the lecture. Then answer the question. Why does the professor say this? However, companies and governments are more concerned with the short-term financial plans to meet investment goals within one fiscal year, and therefore, they often overlook the bigger picture. Question 5. What does the professor imply about tidal turbines? Question 6. According to the professor, what disadvantage does tidal turbines have? <laughs> 